when I was growing up, when I became a, a, an adult, as it were, we were lulled into believing that Terence Rattigan, and all great plays, well written and so on, were it. Were it. And then suddenly these spirits came like uh, 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 waiting for Godot and then uh, look back in anger and then most particularly um, uh, Harold Pinter um, and then um, uh, Joe Wharton. And this was a breath of life. It spoke to us, our generation, and we uh, clutched to it like crazy and were very, very excited by this new voice in the English theater, which had been so sluggardly before that. Um, I think I told you at lunch, uh, uh, I uh, heard about the production of uh, The Caretaker and we jumped into a train and came all the way to London, the Arts Theater to see The Caretaker and were knocked out by it. And then Joe came along and he, um, he really uh, spoke to me in a very, very specific way. One is that, he hated the hypocrisy of the world, and that's what he was knocking more than anything else. Um, that this pretense of everything that was fine, and you had to pretend, and then in the meantime you were doing terrible things. And the first play was obviously entertaining with Sir Sloan, where these two people, um, the, the boys just murdered their father, and they're so hot to have him that they, um, they blackmail him into, um, uh, uh, serving them, uh, one gets pregnant, the woman gets pregnant, and, and, uh, and the brother is just his lover. And I felt that uh, it was important that finally uh, he was a playwright, not entirely alone, but he was a playwright who was holding up um, the world that we were all capable of. We're all capable of terrible things if we're put into the wrong uh, situation and these two, this brother and sister were crazy for the boy and they were able to live with their father's death and, and misbehave. So I was very excited by this and then I read um, <clears throat> Lute and frankly when I read it I actually fell off the chair, I was laughing so much. Very soon after that I went to America because my father lived there and was not well and uh, uh, I was shocked that nobody wanted to see Joe Orton. Uh, he'd had two or three flops. There was a sort of strange production of uh, what the butler saw with the truncated and changed end, which I didn't see. And I was shocked that, that it didn't fly. And then to my surprise, I was cast in Irpingham camp and that didn't fly. And I became very good friends with this man called Joe Mahar. And, um, uh, we just loved Joe Wharton and thought we would have to do get it together. And we went around trying to raise money to get this play on, on an off-Broadway off situation, which really means uh, pennies and, and, um, and, and, and cents. Um, and uh, everybody we approached said, why would we want to do a, give money to you to a play about a a boy who murders this ma old man and they, they blackmail him into being a sexual object. And so uh, we were felt pretty doomed. And then suddenly um, somebody said, look, I can raise the $7,000, can you believe it, to put this play on. And um, the man who was to have directed it uh, uh, said uh, that he didn't want to. And Joe Mahar, um, who is, was a spectacular actor and a very, very good friend, he said, you should do it. You know more about it than anybody. And I said, are you sure? And he said, yes. So we rehearsed and I was very, very lucky because I not only did I have Joseph Mahar, but I had Barbara Brin and Maxwell Caulfield, who was an up and coming young actor and, and Gwilym Evans in the play. And we had a very, very good time in rehearsals. And then I thought, oh, well, this is uh, not going to work because the English and the American audiences, they obviously don't understand Orton. And on the first performance, there's a line, and I think again I mentioned it at, uh, at lunch, uh, where uh, very early in the play, uh, uh, whatever her name, Kath says, uh, them's my winter curtains, my summer ones are more of a chintz. And the audience fell about, and I thought, oh my God, they get it, they get it. And it was a huge hit. 
so much so that it transferred to a, to a, uh, a secondary theatre and it ran for, I don't know, nine months or so. Uh, in fact, we had to replace uh, some of the actors so we can continue. And it does speak to me in a way that few other playwrights do. Anyway, that was, that was the beginning of my career with, uh, with Joe Orton and my constant love for him. And because of the hit of um, entertaining Mr. Sloan, I became friends with Lynn Meadow and she said, any, any plays you want to do? And so I suggested loot. And again, Joseph Mahal was in it. And I was again very fortunate in having Zoe Wanamaker, uh, Charles Keating, uh, Kevin Bacon, who was re later replaced by Alec Baldwin when it moved to Broadway, and Shelko Ivanik. And uh, uh, again, it was critically a huge hit, and it did last for a few months uh, on, on Broadway. So I was very happy with that. Um, all I can say is that even now, and again, I told you the story, uh, when I did Loot on Broadway, um, there were, I was, it was the Music Box Theatre, and I was able to stand behind uh, the audience. So I was, the back row was right in front of me. And uh, there were two women sitting in the back row, and this play started. And after about five minutes, one turned to the other and said, uh, weird. And I thought, we're done. And about five minutes later, one of them, got it. And she started to scream with laughter and her friend kept looking at her as if she'd gone mad. So um, we, were, we, we, we were sailing. The thing about it is actors respond to his work. They like doing his plays. They're a huge challenge. And uh, if you don't do them right, it fails, as uh, you've probably seen once or twice that if you don't do it exactly how, if you do get the rhythms wrong, if you get the intention wrong, or if you start mugging, or if you start winking at the audience, it just fails. I think you have to really um, understand his music. I know that's a sort of pretentious word to say. Um, if you do it in any other way, if you give it a slant, um, you know, every playwright actually has different ways of playing it. Um, but I think Orton and maybe Wilde, um, uh, and I, I'm sure uh, Noel Coward, if you do it any other way than the way he has written it, and his rhythm, and his, the way he builds a scene, the way he develops the character, the way he, he um, uh, uh, lets you understand what is happening, though not, not completely, you know, um, you get into very sticky waters. Um, when I did, um, I don't mean to malign him, but when I did entertaining Mr. Sloan Maxwell Caulfield after the first two or three previews, uh, realized that all the jokes were Joseph Mahars and Barbara Brins, and he started wanting to get laughs himself and began to mug and thing, and suddenly, uh, the laughs were not coming, and it all got murky, and I had to have a long, serious talk with him about how he had to um, do what he was doing in rehearsals. Otherwise, the, it would just slant it away. And I have to be honest, the two actors came to me and said, we can't play what we're playing with him doing, pulling faces of the audience. He wasn't literally doing that, but he was doing something close to that. And he knuckled under, and I must take my hat off to him, he did knuckle under, and he was brilliant. I mean, he was wonderful and actually had a movie career as a result of it. The challenges of, um, uh, as a director is um, not to fall into traps, not to find an easier route. First of all, your set has to be accurate. If the set is wrong, you can do whatever you like and it won't work. Um, I, I mean, this was a very important case in point in the Kenneth Williams production of Loot, which I didn't see, but I saw photographs and I thought, no, 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 he's commenting on the play. 
and you've got to let the play do the work, not, not the set and so on. So that's one challenge. And also the other challenge is you have to remain true to the characters and to the language and to the rhythm of the language. And if you fail in that thing, it falls apart very, very quickly. There are rhythms which are crucial. Um, you, you can't just suddenly do it. And it's like a piece of music. Yes, I know music. There are different peoples who play, a, um, you know, a Brahms sonata or something. But it, in this case, it has to be done in a, in a very specific way, and you have to hit those notes. And you ca are often tempted to take maybe an easy route or a different route. And there is, in my mind, and this is, I'm going to be sneered on for, for this, but th there is only one route with, with, um, with uh, Orton. And I do feel it's true with uh, uh, Oscar Wilde uh, and, um, and, I, and to a certain extent, um, uh, Noel Coward. Um, so uh, it, it is, that is, that's what you have to watch out. You have to really concentrate on that. And you know actors will come in and say, couldn't I just, if I just, uh, and you think, okay, let's try it. And then they try it. And then as often as not, they turn to me and say, it doesn't work, does it? And I say, but you tried it. Now you don't have that agony in your head thinking, could I have done, should I have done that instead? I get a bigger laugh and no, you didn't. Well, the only experience I have, obviously, is what the butler saw. Um, what happened with the butler saw here uh, at the Manhattan Theatre Club, I unfortunately had a girlfriend who um, insisted on coming to the first preview. And she brought her father and, and family. And it was an unmitigated disaster. I mean, it was just, you know, um, horrible. Uh, everybody thought, the, well, what have they gone absolutely mad bringing this play here? Um, mind you, by then, um, Lindsay Anderson had done his version. And um, uh, Michael Caldron, who brought, the, who, in, who uh, encouraged uh, Jenny Topper to bring it here, came up to me and said, well, I suppose um, some wines don't travel. And uh, there was a lot of wrist slashing in the middle of my night. And I thought, oh dear, you know, it, maybe he's right. Maybe it doesn't, it doesn't fly. And I promise you, on the very next night, it just took off. Because they were trying, the actors were trying to find the space. The lighting was too intense. That's the only thing I can say. We pulled it down. Um, but they were not on top of it in the way they should have been, in control. And the next, very next night, it took off. And by the time we opened, which was a very short preview, I mean, I think it was four or five performances, it just literally flew by the time the critics came in. And I'm very grateful that um, they were very positive. I think the plays work if they're done right in both countries. You'll find there are some laughs that will happen in England that don't happen in America and vice versa. But I, I have my, my experience of it is that it's been, frankly, triumphant in both, both countries. I mean, I obviously did not do loot here. Um, and uh, uh, it, uh, it, 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 if, if you stay true to the playwright, um, which is unfashionable these days as far as I'm concerned, but I'm old, um, uh, uh, you, you, you will win. And um, I was really, really nervous that night at uh, what the butler saw when it absolutely, I mean, when I say it fell flat, I mean, it really fell flat. And the cast came around looking aghast and saying, what have we done wrong? And, you know, and all that. And then that it took off the very next night. And again, in, in New York, when we did it, it was uh, at the Manhattan Theatre Club, which is a prescription audience, as I call it, um, and uh, they just didn't get it. They didn't get it. And then about, they got some laughs, and they just thought it was weird. And then suddenly it took off. And from the moment it took off, either the word got round or whatever, people do listen to each other. Um, and they, um, uh, uh, they really took to it. And on Broadway, it was... Uh, I mean, when we transferred loot, uh, I told you the first story about the 
two ladies, and there was another time I was standing behind the audience and there was a man, and as the curtain went up, he fell asleep, and I thought, oh God, that's wonderful. And then about five minutes later, he woke up and he went, mm. <laughs> he started laughing. Why? So some part of him was still listening. My favorite Auden play, I think, is because it's the, the best play, is Lute. Um, because of the things I've just said, uh, what the butler saw, the, there are some inconsistencies there. There's some, it is the maddest play, and it's a brilliant step forward on his part. To go from loot to what the butler saw um, is brilliant. And, uh, but I just feel that it doesn't, um, you know, quite, uh, it doesn't have the polish that it should have had and would have had had he lived. And that's what makes me like uh, loot more. And I've only done loot twice, whereas what the butler saw, I think I've done five times now. It's, it's frightening to think of, but, um, I, I, and that is, that is really why I feel that is, I, I mean, I, 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 I think again, I told you at lunch that I, Arthur Miller was a very close friend of mine and he had, he'd heard of Orton, but had never seen him. And he came to see loot and was, intoxicated by the way. And here's Arthur Miller who writes very traditional Ibsen-esque Greek type plays. Um, and he just fell in love with it to the point that he always imitated Joseph Mahar in the part and came and saw it again. And he also came and saw What the Butler Saw, which he liked. But it, again, like I said, he had a, some reservations and said, because I explained to him that Joe had never seen a production of it and might have uh, changed it. I don't think he would have changed it a lot, but I think he would have done some cleanup, which would have made it fly just that. It's the end where it just goes a little awry and you have to fudge it a bit to make it work. It's still very, very funny. I know I'm ancient, but um, I, I haven't noticed that it's changed so much. Are they as interested in his work as they used to be, I don't know. We're in a very different period in theater, um, you know, the theater, theatrical experience at the moment. And this kind of uh, very precise, well-made play is not what is um, au courant at the moment. It's my impression. Um, uh, the, the plays now sort of go on and on all over the place. And um, this is very precisely um, two hour play. And if you play it right, it will be two hours. Um, and uh, so that may mean that it, uh, it's not quite as, uh, but I don't think it'll disappear. I mean, it's like, you know, when you talk about Coward and I don't particularly, uh, want to uh, liken him to Cowd, but it, they just thought Cowd was a, a light playwright and they dismissed it. And whose plays are being revived over and over again but Cowd and not Sherwood Anderson and uh, you know, all those other um, uh, stodgy writers of the 30s. Do I think that Orton is still shocking? Yes. Very much so. Shocking beyond belief to some of them, because I think the pendulum is swinging back and forth between liberalism and, and so on. So when, when things happen, um, in my productions of what the butler saw, the boy is always uh, naked when he comes on wearing, uh, naked holding the policeman's helmet. Um, he's naked and you cop his, uh, you see his cock. Um, and immediately covers the policeman helmet on. The, um, they are, they appalled and then scream with laughter because of her response to, to, um, uh, to what she's seen. You know, I see men, uh, I, I see penises everywhere, she says, or whatever the line is. And the audience screams the laughter. So, so it's all right. But I do think that Sloan does still offend people that, uh, you know, murder, you murdered your father and you get this boy to screw you. Uh, but frankly, we're all capable of all sorts of terrible things. The word rape is a touchstone, um, frankly, in both uh, Los Angeles and in, uh, New, in, uh, in Westport. 
I changed, changed the word to ravished. Instead of uh, I, I was raped, I was ravished. And you wouldn't believe the difference. Raped, oh, because it's a, it's a key word now, you know, and uh, quite rightly. And ravished sounds as if she wasn't too unhappy about the, the event. Did Orton change theatre? To my mind, he did, but I'm so prejudiced. Um, you know, are we going to see more plays in that vein and that kind of rhythm and so on? Um, I think it's particularly an English idiom, frankly. And I'm thrilled that the Americans have finally got it. Uh, but I do think uh, that he's very much of his time and of a particular kind of play. I think people are um, intimidated by or Orton because he's such a classic writer. And I mean that truly as that. He's a classic writer and they just feel they can't go anywhere near that themselves. And in America now, uh, the writers are writing a very naturalistic, um, very uh, naturalistic uh, um, uh, social themed plays. Um, like the, the Bruce Norris, who was in my original production of What the Butler Saw in, London, in New York. Um, and uh, um, that's, that's the way it goes. But I think it'll always be there. That's my hope, and, and I believe it.